Joining me right now is the Tennessee senator herself. She is a Senate Judiciary Committee member, Marsha Blackburn. Senator, it's always a pleasure. Thanks very much for seeing, uh, for being Good here. Good morning. And today is day three of the questioning. I watched you last yes. night, and it was late. You've been working hard on this. Tell me what you take away from this hearing so far. What I've taken away from the hearing so far is that Judge Jackson clearly is firmly placed in the progressive wing of the Democrat Party. When I asked her to define woman, she wouldn't even give me a definition of woman. Uh, she is on the school board that is pushing CRT to children as young as five years old, Maria. And one of the things of tremendous concern to me is the way she has been light on child pornographers, child abusers in her sentencing practices. And of course, this is an area where I've put a tremendous amount of effort and work making certain that our children are safe online. It has been a bipartisan focus, but she has chosen to go below the minimum recommended sentence. That should be alarming to every parent in this country. Yeah, I mean, you mentioned that elite private school. She's on the board of trustees in, in, on that school in Washington, D.C., that promotes CRT. And her questionnaire for the Senate Judiciary right. Committee said that she has been a board or a trustee member of the Georgetown Day School since 2019. Let me ask you, are you seeing any other pushback from your colleagues on the left? I mean, do you—I th I, I see that the Republicans have been pressing hard, but will she get through anyway? You need a Democrat to also say— I'm not say, sure. Uh, —raise these issues, right? Yeah, yes. Go ahead. Maria, you know, when you look at some of these Democrats and the fact that their school boards are being turned upside down by parents that are furious with what has been happening, and these parents are not necessarily Republican, they're not necessarily political, but they are very concerned about parental rights. And here we have a mm. judge who has been soft on parental rights, cannot answer these questions about protecting children if when it comes to dealing with these child abusers and these child pornography uh, data holders. Um, it's astounding. When she is light on crime, if she had had her way, 1,500, all 1,561 federal criminal detainees in the D.C. Circuit would have been let go during COVID because of compassionate release. And she even agreed to yeah. put a, a convicted fentanyl dealer on the streets, a murderer of a U.S. Marshal, and a bank robber oh, who's addicted to heroin. Let him go out of jail. And women are concerned about crime. Women are concerned about CRT. Women are concerned yeah. about parental rights. And here we have a nominee who cannot define woman. That is pretty extraordinary. I think you, you had great analysis at the start of this interview by saying what we're talking about is someone from the progressive woke left. And we need to understand that as she right. uh, is headed to this very critical, important seat of the Supreme Court, potentially. Senator, I want to I switch gears. I know this is the final day of questioning today. We'll be yeah. watching that. But what's your take on manufacturing some of the items that are so important to the United States in the United States. We are about to talk with the CEO of Intel. I know he will be testifying today on the Hill about producing semiconductors in the U.S. Why has it taken so long to get our supply chains back to America so that we are not so reliant on places like China and, and Russia uh, for the production of such important uh, critical uh, things like semiconductors, which, of course, are, are, are also produced in Taiwan? Yes, and some of us have focused on this for quite a while when it comes to our critical supply chains and getting these components for our auto manufacturers, telecommunications manufacturers, those critical supply chains back. Now, a lot of these companies bought the China line that they could produce it cheaper in China and ship it in, but now is the time for our Commerce Department, who has been very slow to target this, it is time for them to pick their pace up, bring this manufacturing home. 
Yeah, well, uh, Pat Gels uh, Gelsinger, CEO of Intel, is going to be looking at Congress to see if uh, he could get the funding yes. to, to ramp this up, Senator. So we'll, we'll talk with him soon. It's great to see you this morning. Marsha Blackburn, thanks very much for joining you. us Thank this you. morning and for your leadership yesterday. Watched you late into the night. Intel